From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Devastating losses left in the wake of wildfires across Rosebud County in northern Wyoming. We'll have details on relief plans in both of those areas, plus an up-close look at agricultural losses. Lots of land burned and livestock lost. We have the story of a man who's trying to help out our ranchers. Plus, Laurel Schools is making big changes to its school lunch program to meet growing demand. Good morning and welcome back to Montana this morning on this Tuesday, August 27th. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. Good morning, everybody. And we're headed into a bit of a cool down this week, but not quite yet. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be hot today. Uh, in the middle of the week, uh, tomorrow and Thursday, we'll see those cooler temperatures, and then it's going to get hot as we get into the Labor Day weekend. But speaking of cool, check this out. We hit 68 yesterday in Billings, a good 15 degrees below average. It was a beautiful day yesterday outside of the rain. Not much rain here in Billings at all. I mentioned we possibly could get a tenth of an inch depending on where that low went. It stayed more to the east of us, so we didn't get much rain at all. Uh, some areas got a decent soaking, and we'll show you some of those reports coming in just a bit. So we're up to nine tenths of an inch. Oh, getting closer and closer to an inch for the month. We're going to wrap up with no more rain, I think, here in Billings. So that's probably going to be the number by the end of the week. Still for the month, we're pacing slightly ahead for the year. We're still in the hole and there outside of tomorrow. There is no rain in the forecast. So I had mentioned yesterday it was probably going to be our best day of seeing a nice soaking. Just didn't pan out here in the uh, Magic City. 54 right now at the airport. Humidity at 90 percent. Dew point temperatures at 51. Very close to our actual temperature. We may see a little bit of fog here in Billings, but if you're east of Yellowstone County and south of Yellowstone County, there's a better chance you can run into some patchy fog this morning on your way to work. Winds out of the southwest at about five miles an hour. 40s and 50s. Mainly clear this morning. Just a really nice morning. Hot day today, but let's talk about that cool down coming up. We'll do that here in just a bit. All right, Miller, thanks for tracking all of that. And in our top stories this morning, we're checking out wildfires. More than 800 firefighters are battling four separate blazes stretching northern Wyoming and southeastern Montana. Those wildfires burned nearly 450,000 acres of land, but the weather is changing and crews are making progress. The largest fire, the Remington, burned nearly 200,000 acres alone and remains 0% contained. That fire began in Wyoming before quickly spreading to Montana, impacting Bighorn Rosebud and Powder River counties. However, fire behavior was significantly reduced Sunday. Firefighters were able to secure lines on nearly all sides. On Monday, crews mopped up and continue securing lines to the southwest. A flash flood warning was lifted Monday evening after concerns due to rain on the burn area. And if you want to help out, uh, of course, lots of farmers and ranchers in the area, landowners lost property in this blaze. Rosebud County Emergency Management is working to form a committee to organize incoming donations. They posted Monday on their Facebook page to hold off on donations for just another day or so until they're ready to organize and distribute those. Rosebud EMS asked ranchers in Rosebud County to compile a list of their losses and email them to kraymond at rosebudcountymt.com and they will figure out what to do with that information from there as they distribute resources. One of the biggest impacts from this fire is felt by farmers and ranchers where thousands of dollars in livestock and lands are now lost. But with more favorable conditions on the way, including rain, one man who's seen the flames from all angles is looking to help landowners get back on their feet. As our Charlie Kleps reports, that includes reaching out to farmers as far away as Nebraska. That rain and overcast skies welcome news to firefighters. However, these flames have already damaged lots of land and killed livestock. Well, one broadest family has seen these flames firsthand and is doing what they can to help local farmers get back on their feet. It's quite humbling what Mother Nature can do. The images speak for themselves. Destruction left by the Remington fire difficult for many to stomach. I was there when everything was burning and stuff and I saw the devastation. But for those on the front line like Broadus volunteer Kelly Ostendorf, the damage seemed irreplaceable. I didn't think that any cattle would survive. I honestly didn't know if we'd save anybody's house. Ostendorf doubles as a farmer himself. This is his land located east of Broadus, which is safe from the flames. But he knows the impacts this likely uninsured loss will have on fellow farmers. It's hard to insure cattle because it is expensive and it very rarely ever pays out. I don't have insurance on my cows, so if something like this were to happen, you're kind of just out of it. And that's why Austin Dorf started thinking of ways to help, reaching out to fellow farmers in Nebraska, looking for donations of hay, fence, and other items. I'm not making any promises to anybody. I'm just trying to put people that are in need in contact with people that could possibly help. Ostendorf plans to be the middleman, a gesture welcomed by farmers, along with the much needed rainfall Monday. 
we're starting to see a little bit less fire behavior. Jennifer Bunty with Southwest Incident Management says that while the rain is helpful, there's still plenty of work left for the team. When we talk about containment, we talk about having fire lines on the ground that really just won't be crossed. There's just no potential for them to be crossed again. So we're really working on securing those lines. A treacherous time, thankfully reaching its end, but one that will certainly leave a lasting impact. We did what we could, but when something like that's coming at you, you know, we're just looking at saving people's houses and making sure nobody dies. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Charlie, thanks so much. And we've got an update on the house straw fire, which is nearly 90% contained. That fire, which was sparked by lightning between Buffalo and Gillette, Wyoming, has burned almost 175,000 acres. All evacuation orders are now lifted in that area. And Johnson County Commissioners, where a lot of this fire was, are seeking information from people who have suffered agricultural losses because of the blaze. They're working to submit for a USDA disaster declaration, and they need landowners to fill out a survey of their losses ASAP. That form is on the Johnson County website. And in campaign news this morning, debate dispute after former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris appear to be at odds over some of the rules. Trump yesterday also slammed ABC News, the network hosting the September 10th debate. The vice president spent yesterday in Washington following last week's big Democratic National Convention while the former president was on the campaign trail in Virginia and Michigan. CBS's Jared Hill has more from New York. Thank you. For President Donald Trump casting doubt on his first debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, just two weeks before the two were set to go head to head. I said, why am I doing it? Let's do it with another network. I want to do it. Trump slamming the debate's host network as Harris pushes for change of her own. Her campaign writing, Trump's handlers prefer the muted microphone because they don't think their candidate can act presidential for 90 minutes on his own. It was an arrangement made during the only debate between Trump and President Biden. Yesterday, the former president suggested he'd have no problem with the switch. It doesn't matter to me, I'd rather have it probably un- Also yesterday, Trump sought to tie Harris to the attack that killed 13 troops at Kabul airport three years ago during the Biden administration's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. He laid a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery and campaigned in Michigan. The humiliation in Afghanistan set off the collapse of American credibility. Harris released a statement saying those who died in the Kabul attack represented the best of America. She's believed to be preparing for the debate this week while surrogates hit the campaign trail Monday. Kamala is going to help. America's working families, America's middle class. Later this week, Harris heads to Georgia, while Trump will be campaigning in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Jared Hill, CBS News. And back here in Billings, three city-owned properties are front and center at Billings City Council Monday night, requesting TIF funds for safety improvements. Those three nonprofits, the Alberta Bear, the Babcock Theater, and the Billings Depot. However, those businesses left the meeting disappointed for now as the city council sided with the downtown Billings partnership in deciding not to fund two of those projects because of insufficient funds. And council members tabled their discussion on the Babcock Theater improvements. Alberta Bear Theater theater was asking for $83,000 to go towards the installation of bollards or concrete barriers to protect pedestrians. Since the renovation, that area has seen multiple wrecks with vehicles coming very close to hitting buildings and pedestrians waiting outside. Meanwhile, the Babcock Theater submitted an application for $300,000 for marquee rehabilitation, sidewalk construction and replacement exterior doors, among other things. The Billings Depot was looking for $80,000 of a $570,000 project to repair concrete walkways and sidewalks. The Babcock will be back on the agenda soon, while the Alberta Bear and the Depot are expected to reapply before the end of the year. And a Billings staple is preparing to shut its doors for good. After 16 years of serving the Billings community, Soup & Such will close its downtown location. It's owned by Antonia and Mike Craighill. The couple posted an announcement to social media saying their downtown location never returned to pre-COVID customer levels. They said with many empty office spaces downtown and more people working from home, the foot traffic they saw before is diminished. The news is a bummer for patrons like Laren Fortney, who visits that location and has every day for the last 16 years. Been here since they first opened because I did help with the remodeling and everything. So it, it is sad. I know that it's tough for everybody because they're all having the same issue as 
the guy that owns this building. Jock has got space available, but the new tenants aren't coming. The downtown soup and such's last day will be on August 30th. Meanwhile, the West End location at Shiloh Crossing is still open for business. The number of students qualifying for free and reduced lunches in Montana is on the rise. Right now, nearly 69,000 K-12 through students were on the program just last year. That's about one out of every two kids. Now, three Laurel schools are answering the call to make sure their kids don't go hungry. When classes start next week, kindergarten through fourth grade students at South, West, and Graff Elementary schools are eligible for free meals. However, some are not happy that it's only three of the schools and not the high school, claiming all schools and students should be included. Laurel Public Schools Superintendent Matt Torek says the disparity in age comes from the return rate of eligibility forms and different lifestyles. The older kids, generally, they don't fill out free and reduced lunch forms at the same rate. High school kids tend to go home, they go eat on their own, they go run to McDonald's. Laurel, like Billings, begins their school year next Tuesday. And a Billings business owner recently took center stage in Las Vegas. But it wasn't for his cafe. Rather, it was for jiu-jitsu, taking home gold in one of the most prestigious national tournaments. In this morning's Positively Montana, our Haley Monaco catches up with Will Grundhauser. There's a new business in downtown Billings, and the name may sound familiar to you. The owner is not just well-known in Montana, but across the nation. A man that wears many hats. I have young children, awesome wife at home, we've got two businesses. And many medals. I probably won 120 like MMA titles and national and world titles with my team. I've trained under three amazing people. I just started training under a fourth, but I got my black belt from Silvio Barian of X Gym Brazil. Will Grundhauser has traveled coast to coast fighting and winning, with the most recent achievement being in the prestigious Abu Dhabi Combat Club World Championship in Las Vegas. I just wanted to prove I'm good at this, and I really, the bigger, the stronger the person, the more excited I get for the opportunity. If you're a mountain climber and you're climbing the bear tooth, it's pretty cool. If it's Everest, you're like, whoa. And to me, this is Everest. Grundhauser won his weight division in Vegas and added to that collection of medals with another gold. Now back home, he's doing the same thing he's been for the last decade, giving back to his community at the Grindhouse. He's been a great influence in my life for the, the positive. Yeah. The, the talent combined with his ability to connect with you know, his students is just, like I say, not only rare for Billings, but uh, nationwide. A positive light, an inspiration to hundreds of students, but still humble. I really don't like attention. I always try and, oh, but look what they did, you know, that's really how I operate. Our community is what I'm most proud of overall, you know, like we have every walk of life in here. Full of accomplishments and accolades. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News.